Good evening and welcome to the 15th meeting of the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. Tonight we will have a guest speaker, Ms. Pat Donovan Potts, who will be presenting on habitat preservation. And joining us, we have our new member, Grace Hallbrook, who is finally here. We've heard a lot Thank about you. you, but it's nice for you to be able to join us. Thank you. Um, and we hope you had a, a fun trip while I you were do. gone. Thank you. Uh, at this time, Glenn, would you like uh, if you'll to stand present up. Ms. Hallbrook with her <laughs> board service pen? We want to present you with your board service pen and it identifies you as a member of the city advisory board so congratulations Thank on behalf of the much. council miss washington wasn't able to be here this evening she had a sudden illness in her family mm -hmm. and so we pray for her and hope that your speedy recovery of her brother but she wanted you to have a pen this evening and this is a good thing so Thank welcome you aboard much. Thank you. <laughs> it'd be great if you tell us a little bit about yourself now and uh, um we got to jacksonville uh through the military we've been here and decided to make jacksonville our home i have two sons and three animals <laughs> <laughs> okay good well thank you for joining us okay. and we also have a new uh chamber leadership shadow member miss mary ellen nolan would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself please? um i've been here about four years uh, I work at Senior Services as an administrative assistant to the director. I have five children oh, wow. <laughs> and two grandkids. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you as well. Thank you. Um, Willie, would you like to, we're going to just go around and we can introduce ourselves if you don't have to tell too much. If you don't want, you can just go by your name if you like. My name is Willie Saunders and I'm a member. Karen Jones, member. Mindy Peterson, member also. Betty Shufflebine, member. Patrick Carroll, member. Gina Webb, member. Isaac Keyes, member. Sarah Holden. Grace Hopper, member. Linda Smith, member. And Suzanne Nelson. And I'm Glenn Hargett. I serve as staff to the committee. And this is Pat Donovan Potts. She's the stormwater manager for the city of Jacksonville. And behind is Carla Portier. And she serves as our administrative assistant uh, for the purposes of this meeting. Her daytime job is she says hello to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it always uh, On page five is the committee listing. Just make sure that your information is up to date. If you find that it's not, just let staff know and they will get that corrected. Earlier this week, uh, the agenda was sent out to email, was sent out via email to everyone. Do we have a motion to adopt or amend? Motion to adopt. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. The agenda will stand up written. Along with that email, we also received the minutes uh, from the September 5th meeting. Hopefully everybody had a chance to go over those. So do we have a motion to adopt, correct or reject? I have a motion to adopt. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Stand as adopted. Attendance report, page 13. As we all know, there are no excused absences and there is an automatic removal for lack of attendance. So if you'd like to take a brief second or two to look at that just to make sure your attendance is correct, that would be great. However, if you do find that it's not right, please let staff know so they can get that um, amended as well. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm happy. <laughs> Hand it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, the Stormwater Water Quality Division was um, something that has actually transformed over the last 16 years uh, with the Wilson Bay Initiative. Um, way back when, we, we decommissioned the wastewater treatment facility at Wilson Bay. Um, and in the movement forward in taking over stormwater, we wear a lot of different hats and a lot of people aren't sure what stormwater water quality actually does. Just to give you a brief overview, stormwater is uh, one of our largest pollutants since we shut down our wastewater treatment facilities and went 100% land application. The base followed suit as well. So stormwater is a, a big word in, out in the community just because so many pollutants are carried by stormwater. So our division is actually responsible for all the testing and monitoring 
for the city's NPDES permit, it's our stormwater permit as a municipality, we are legally bound to test and monitor. We also respond to illicit discharges. It's one of our number one priorities. People put things down storm drains that they shouldn't. Um, we also, by keeping our thumb on the water quality parameters, we, we go and look for things that just aren't right. Education is a huge component, which is, I guess, why I'm here tonight, is to talk about future contaminants and things that might threaten the New River, even though we've come very far in bringing her back from what she once was back in 98, 99, 2000. Um, so just brief overview. If you ever have any questions about water quality or the river or stormwater, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, the New River is unique. It starts and ends in the same county. We were not able to point fingers at other municipalities or other counties when our river was closed to recreational commercial uses uh, off and on for 10 years, mid 80s through the mid 90s. Um, it's a resource that should be protected. Uh, water is something that we use every day. It's a vital, important part of our bodies. So this is why stormwater is so important is we have anywhere from eight to 9,000 storm drains within the city limits alone. That does not include our ETJ or without out in the county, catch basins and storm drains all lead to the new river. They do not go to our wastewater treatment facility. They are not, it's not treated. It is hardwired straight out into the river. So that's something that I still need to tell everybody because not everybody realizes that. So whatever goes down those eight or 9,000 storm drains comes out into our tributaries, be it Northeast Creek, Southwest Creek, um, Mill Creek, Cheney Creek, and that all dumps into the new river and affects us one way or another. So what are some of the um, pollutants that are actually could destroy our habitat as we were forward, move forward into restoring it? First and foremost is fertilizers. Is now that we're on the back side of spring and summer, this should actually slow down. Um, fertilizing of the grass and your flowers and, and also of agriculture slows down in the fall early into the winter but it's still something that we need to educate ourselves at. Always read the labels, don't ever apply directly before a rain event. Now how in North Carolina do you know when we're going to have a rain event? Well we never know. Yeah. <laughs> so use sparingly. Why are fertilizers such a large contaminant to our habitat? This is a body of water. It looks like you could walk across it because it is so thick with duckweed and algae that it doesn't look like a body of water. This is what excessive fertilizers in the form of nitrogen, ammonia, and phosphates will do to a body of water. Now, this also will not allow organisms to survive underneath because it, it depletes the dissolved oxygen in this water body. Another um, problem would be, these are not trash cans. <laughs> The eight to 9,000 storm drains in our city are not trash cans. And so I try to ask everybody, landscapers, homeowners, business owners, please don't cut your grass and blow grass clippings directly into it. Now that we're coming into the fall, please don't put your leaves down it. Um, because if you do, this is what happens. All of that ends up downstream and it ends up blocking major waterways. And if that